Alright, so this is an update for my uh, my coyote motor and that tick that we were talking about at one point in time. Well, found out what the tick was. Um, it was not a phaser. It was actually a spun bearing that was on cylinder five, which is on the other side over here in the front. Nonetheless, that tick, he eventually turned into a, yes, everything is blue. Um, it turned into a, like an unbalanced motor type scenario and caused my motor to like really like shut down to be on safe mode. And, you know, I'm not the only one. The thing that scares me is I'm not the only one that has this issue or has, has had this issue. Um, I've looked on YouTube and I've seen a lot of people with the same issue with this motor. F-150 and Mustang alike. And one thing that I noticed is that, you know, people have been doing a lot of phaser replacing and I've yet to see anybody have to actually go inside the motor, you know, and actually do a, um, you know, a um, connector rod bearing swap or a, well, in my case now, I took out the damn can shaft. I wasn't playing around because I saw that the can shaft was scored up and the can shaft is right here. As you can see, this is where cylinder one, uh, crap, my light is shitty. Cylinder one is over here, and the cylinder five was right here. As you can see, cylinder five, or piston five rather, that where the connector rod and the band was at is extremely scored up. So I didn't even want to put this back in here. I know I could turn it and all that other crap, but you know what I mean? I wanted to make sure it was, you know, 100% straight. So. I went ahead and got a, another crankshaft, put a new crankshaft in here, redid all my bearing work. Um, redid all my bearings. What I mean by that is I did all my main bearings and I did all my um, my uh, connector rod bearings. So I redid all those. Um, so that whole bottom half is rebuilt basically. Um, Torque the spec, of course. And, you know, um, this thing was not easy. I mean, I, 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 I'll give it to y'all for y'all. I'm telling you, this thing was no joke in rebuilding, you know, even breaking down to figure out what was going on. I don't have that many. I don't have that stretch of a length of power tool. However, I was able to do what I had to do. And, um, you know, take the engine out, um, figure out. Cause like I said, I was, you know, at, after replacing this phaser, I believe it was this phaser right here. After replacing that phaser, I had, um, took the cylinder head off. I took the cylinder head off because I still felt something in this area. I heard something in this area. It was like a tick or whatever. Or like a knock, you know what I mean? When you just turn the motor manually. And basically, I um, took the cylinder head off and I was putting my hand over each piston. Like, you know, just seeing if I felt something weird in a wall or whatever. And, you know, just you know, just, I guess you would say probe or troubleshooter. And I, uh, I was talking to my daughter and uh, I noticed that on this particular piston, piston five, you know, every time I pushed, you know, I cranked, I rotated the motor, the, uh, it would, um, I guess you could say, um, it'll rise and then it would like, when, I, when it was time for it to fall or recess or whatever, I pushed, I was able to push it down, you know, 
And I felt that was really, really freaking strange. So, you know, I got under the car, went under the motor, took the oil pan off, which was a, it wasn't fun, just put it like that. And, um, yeah, that thing turns down easy. And you got this thing anchored, and I know this is not the wisest thing to do. But anyway, I, um, I'll turn it in a better secure area because I don't want to do all this work and then have this thing drop and then y'all laugh at me. That'd be funny. Um, nonetheless, um, went in the motor, saw that that um, connector rod was pretty much, it was a uh, score. You saw that crankshaft. <laughs> and from that point, you know, I um, started mapping my way on how I was going to take the motor out. Now, on me, I literally took everything out of this Mustang. Like, I mean, not everything. I had some front end damage to it, so I had, like, took the... You can't really say it that well. But I took the front end off of it because I um, remember taking the radiator core support off and redoing that, but I took out, I had to lower the K-frame just to get the oil pan off the car. And the K-frame is literally right now, it's, you know, it's loose, it's, it's out there. So, uh, y'all yeah, really can't see that, that well, hold on, let me grab this light if I can. Excuse my garage, it is what we call fucked up. Chunky, but you know, but no, nah, I took out my K-frame. My K-frame was like dangling down at the bottom. I got my tranny. I mean, I had to make sure everything was straight on that. There was no leaks, nothing goofy on that. What I did notice is that there was a little bit of oil leak going on at the oil pan base and at the um, crank. Um, I don't know how well you guys are with these coyotes, but these coyotes, when you take off the crankshaft pulley, you have to read there's a little bit of sealant that goes in that that uh that keyhole and you have to put sealant in around you know around that um uh, crankshaft you know um the end of the crankshaft when you put the uh crankshaft pulley back on nonetheless I like, like i said just took this whole thing out and uh you know, this is what the engine bay of a Mustang with no um, inch looks like. Um, like I said, yeah, I did this without any kind of, like, shop guide or anything of the nature. Now, I did go online and get some things off of there just to, you know, know what I was doing and everything like that. So, I mean, this has been a long, drawn-out process. This has been going on since last, or since January. Yeah, it's been going on for about a year. Real talk. I mean... So now it was started in January and my car went down in May. You know what I mean? I seen posts of people talking about you could drive with it still like this and da 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 da. Fuck that. No. Take your if you can't do what I'm doing, take your ass to Ford and tell them that, you know, make sure you're under the sixty thousand mile warranty. If you're under for sixty thousand mile warranty, go ahead and get the Ford. Let them know that, hey, partner, you know what I mean? My, this motor is ticking. I don't know, the, you know, I don't heard it was phasers, and also I heard that it was also from, you know, just post right here that it was also a spun bearing or a bad bearing, you know. they make that determination and go from that point. But I had to take this thing out of here, like I said, and, you know, it's been a fun thing with me and uh, my car, you know. Um, but uh, it's crazy. Um, but this is, like I said, this is the halfway point. I'm about to put, or I'm past the halfway point. I'm about to put this thing back on in here, you know. Get this thing put on in back in here and, you know, put it, hook it up, have it started, which I hear when I got, got it running and we go from there. Until then, all my peoples that, you know, 
was asking me questions about this motor. Like I said, the end result was this had a spunk bearing in it and it caused piston five over here to literally act the ass and almost go out of time. Um, I had to replace the crank. I, in my case scenario, had to replace the crank shaft. Some people may not have to do that. Some people may be just lucky enough to get their crank shaft turned and you know, the world would be a better place. But nonetheless, um, I took the crank shaft out took all the bearings out, the connector rod bearings and the main bearings, replaced those, put a new crankshaft in, and bam, we back to a smooth ass running motor. I mean, it's like I was just turning it without, I was just turning, I was turning with my left hand, and it's smooth as hell, so no tick, no nothing, well, at least on the manual tip, and you know, we'll be starting this up in about a day or so. Peace.